What is up guys, it's Bruin Steel and welcome back to another WWE broadcast. I'm your host Bruin Steel and today we are recapping the Monday Night Raw on October 30th, 2023 and it took place in Greenville, South Carolina and it's the final Raw before Crown Jewel. So this is an exciting show and I'm once joined by Canadian Yorker. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good tonight. How about you? Good, good. Um, like I said, this is the final Raw before um, Crown Jewel, and we're about to do a recap of the Raw, and we're also going to be doing a Crown Jewel re uh, prediction video later on. So yeah, today it's the this video is the final Monday Night Raw before Crown Jewel, so let's get started. So the show opens up with Rhea Ripley flanked by Dominic Mysterio, but this time DJ McDonough. It seems like you know, Judgment Day has accepted J.D. McDonough in the group, but we have to see what happens. I don't think Damon Priest approved it yet, but um, basically said that Rhea Ripley, like always said that Judgment Day is the one that runs the show, and Dominic is going to put down Ricochet later tonight, and then J.D. McDonough goes one-on-one with World Heavyweight Champion Seth Freak and Rollins. And until they said that Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins need to decide who wants to win, whoever gets crushed under... Judgment's um, boot. And basically, Rhea Ripley said that she's going to prove that she's the most dominant woman in the WWE by winning the Fatal Five Way at Crown Jewel until they get interrupted by Sami Zayn. Um, Sami Zayn, that he is sick of the Judgment Day saying, say, sick of Judgment and saying that they run the show, saying that um, Judgment Day said he's going to fight the Judgment Day no matter if it's one on two, one on three, one on four, one on five. And he goes like him. He goes like a complete um, Hulk mode. On the Judgment Day, and basically, um, the three of them try to um, jump Sami Zayn, but then um, Sami Zayn gets backed up, backed out from um, gets back up from Ricochet. Ricochet backing up um, Sami in this fight, so Ricochet comes out in even odds. Um, basically, JD goes for the tag. JD uh, Ricochet ducks him. Dom tries to attack from behind, but um, Ricochet managed to avoid Dominic. Um, Ricochet and Sami Zayn. Um, standing tall, but people are saying that oh, there's Ricochet feuding with the Judgment Day one month, so big rip to Ricochet feuding with the Judgment Day. So, what did you think of the first segment, opening segment? I think it's, it's a, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what the reason is behind Ricochet feuding with the Judgment Day, but I think it's an interesting, it's a nice angle, it's a good push for Ricochet to, to you know, continue his, um, you know, his little feud with. Dominic Mysterio. We haven't really seen Ricochet be being pushed as far as I don't know as as a wrestling goes. He's I think he's he's an underrated wrestler. Um I know when I first saw him, um when I first went to the WWE match when he came to Albany, um I saw him doing his thing. He was very he's very, very high flying um wrestler he's really exciting to watch as a wrestler um i really like his feud with logan paul you know continues with that he's he's feuding with with dominic because dominic is friends of logan paul and him and going after logan paul and and dominic is, is interesting so um i think ricochet will be a really good uh matchup for dominic in terms of feuding with him and and because uh, Dominic really needs that needs needs some sort of person besides Rey Mysterio who can who can match him and uh, and that's who Rick is so I don't know. so I like to see that. And we do want to mention that the reason Ricochet has beef with Dominic is because uh, Rick, he and Logan Paul last week, if you don't remember, disrespected Sis, Samantha um, Irvin, who is Ricochet's fiance or whoever. Um, so Dominic Mysterio with Logan Paul disrespected Ricochet, attacked both of them. That's how this match is going to come about, which leads to the first match of the, the night of that night is Dominic Mysterio going one on one with Ricochet. Um, this was a okay of a match. I wasn't really a big fan, um, just because maybe Judgment Day, like always, running interference. Um, Ricochet obviously was dominating most of the match, but here we go again with the bullshit with the Judgment Day. They need to stop interfering. Um, um, you know, Ricochet seems like he was about to win, 
But then um, Rhea Ripley runs interference. Dominic Mysterio takes advantage. Dominic Mysterio defeats Ricochet by a victory roll-up pin. So once again, Rhea Ripley helping hit her um, poppy win the match. <laughs> Ugh. Um, <laughs> Dominic wins with a, a victory roll-up pin. A, um, cowardly way to win. Like, unbelievable. Dominic Mysterio defeats Ricochet by pitfall. Um, unbelievable. Um, what did you think of this match? It's it's ridiculous. How uh, you know that's it. That's just that's just the way the judgment eight is. They, they is now they they're jumping in to help each other win the matches, and it's unfair advantage, of course, in numbers. Um, you know, it's just just like the bloodline. The bloodline does exactly the same thing, except it's with Rhea Ripley and Dominic helping each other out in their matches. And, you know, when you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Situation going on and i was i would be really it would be, i would find it really interesting if if uh dominic tries if dominic has some sort of title match on the line if if you really gets involved and it's and it's against ricochet what if what if Rhea ripley gets gets interrupted into intervention by 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 ricochet's fiance um in the middle of the match right what if that happens? If she gets fed up and she gets herself involved, you know, but we know she's not a wrestler. She's a ringside announcer. But she's just sitting there right right there watching her man lose. And of course, she's going she's gonna to lose it and then just go after, uh, after, after Rhea Ripley, of course. So, you know, that might happen sometime in the future. I can see that happening sometime in the future. But, um, you know, Dominic winning, of course, with the dirty tactics... You don't call him dirty down for nothing, but he's winning with his uh, with his dirty tactics to, to get these sneaky, dirty wins is not good. Is is it's 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 horrible seeing these things happen. But these are these this is what this is what this is what these this is what people like Dominic do. It's what we at Ripley do. Um, but we do know that those things have backfired on them in the past, and they have lost matches because of. Miscommunication. So you never know, man. These things sometimes these things might backfire. By the way, guys, we are going to December fourth um WB event, so we might see Dominic. So make expect my videos to have a lot of booze when Dominic comes out. <laughs> but um moving on to the next match, we got Alpha Academy, Chad Gable and Otis versus the Creed Brothers. So if you guys don't know who the Creed Brothers, they made their raw debut. Um, it's Brutus and Julius Creed. I only heard them a couple times, but the Creed Brothers, they come from NXT. Um, that um, Raw, they're making their um, Raw debut against Alpha Academy. And this was a great match to my surprise. Um, I, like I said, I only heard about the Creed Brothers a couple times. Um, I don't watch NXT, kind of like um, Canadian Yorker here. We both don't really watch NXT. But um, Alpha Academy going on a tag team match against the Creep Brothers. Um, this was a great match. Um, it went back and forth, you know. Um, Otis doing the Caterpillar um, once again. Um, it's great. I love the Caterpillar. Um, it went back and forth. But um, the Creep Brothers came up with the huge win um, in their raw debut, hitting um, Otis with a um, Brutus Bomb Doomsday device. Um, which is their finisher. It's really deadly, actually. I've seen their finisher. Um, it's similar to a... Um, it's kind of similar to a finisher. I can't remember who does it. I think it's like... A, there's a tag team back in the day that does a similar um, finisher like that. But um, the Creep Brothers defeat Alpha Academy in their raw debut by Pitfall. Um, what a win by the Creep Brothers. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to come to Raw or they're just on um, Raw for just one night. But... Um, they're pretty good. Um, but anyway, the Creep Brothers defeats um, the Alpha Academy by Pitfall in the Raw debut. What did you think of this match? Um, I know. You I think we, 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 we could. We, I don't know. I, I, I don't really watch the NXT, so I probably have to pay more attention to NXT and see how who these who 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 are these NXT wrestlers and what do they do. Um, just like Jade Cargill, Cargill, kind of the same thing with her in that aspect. Um, I've never really, I don't really watch NXT, so 
Um, I think it's a great pickup win for them. And it's great for them to be able to make a transition over from NXT to WWE, which is, I believe, a big jump for them um, as uh, the wrestlers that they are. So hopefully I get to see more of these um, these two in action in the WWE. In the WWE. All right, so the next segment, I do want to mention this backstage segment because it was hilarious. Um, just so you guys know, this was a um, this was a backstage segment. The New Day is backstage dressed up. By the way, I hope you all had a wonderful Halloween. It was great for me. I had some trick-or-treaters. Um, but on um, backstage, Judgment Day are hanging out when um, the New Day were dressed. The New Day were literally dressed up as the New Day and basically offered the Judgment Day candy. And um, they were inter um, they were bothering Damien Priest, J.D. McDonough, and Finn Balor dressed as the Judgment Day. And then they were about to leave when they interrupted by Dominic and Rhea. And then Austin Creek said, hi, mommy. And then um, Kofi said that we got to go, man. And then you he can hear Rhea Ripley say, what in the world? And Dominic saying that, is he wearing my chain? Um, and <laughs> that's the end of the segment. Um, so that was hilarious. It's happy Halloween spirit. Uh, imagine the new day in the Judgment Day. That'd be ugly. Ugh, ugh. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, moving on to the next segment is Miss TV. I miss the Miss TV. Miss TV with his special guest, um, Intercontinental Champion Gunther. So this was an interesting segment. Um, basically, Gunther, Lucifer Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci comes down. And um, basically, Gunther didn't show up. It's just Luke Kaiser and when she comes down and says that the Miz that Gunther isn't gonna come down. And basically, um, the Miz says everything. Um, basically, the Miz started to talk shit about Gunther, which makes Gunther comes back. Um, tells he basically trash talks and making Gunther comes to the ring. And the Miz says that oh. Um, I beat John Cena at WrestleMania. I'm the must-see WWE Champion, greatest Intercontinental Champion of all the time. And he said that he beat Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. He beat John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania. And he was the one that made his Intercontinental, the Goose Intercontinental Championship, the most relevant title at all. And basically, they went at it. Um, Miss um, attacked Imperialism, basically attacked Imperialism. And Gunther, um laid him off with a kick to the face. And Gunther asked him what, um, basically, what um Gunther um thinks he is. So they both Imperialism and Gunther all attacked on um, Miz. So the disrespect there. So what did you think of that segment? <laughs> um, you know, I think I think the Miz and Gunther feuding is an interesting, interesting uh, aspect. Uh, you know, Miz is just looking to pick fights with people. <laughs> he just wants to pick fights with with wrestlers. He, he, he had his feud with LA Knight. Now he's picking fights with Gunther. And I think the Miz versus Gunther is gonna be a really interesting um matchup. I don't think I don't think Gunther is facing anybody at Crown Jewel. But yeah, no. that would probably be that would be an interesting matchup when it comes to war games now. When you see Gunther versus The Miz at War Games, that's going to be a really interesting build-up right there. Um, because that that was that is Gunther's next opponent. Like I said, the longer Gunther is 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 going there, right there, he's about at the halfway point at broken, breaking Roman Reigns' record right now. He's all, I believe he's maybe maybe has already passed five hundred days, but you know he's at the halfway point. Breaking Roman Reigns record, and you know if he gets another five hundred days, he's gonna be ele elevating that 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 world heavyweight championship up to the world heavyweight championship level. So he's bringing a lot of um, context to the to the Intercontinental Championship, and I mean it's gonna be interesting to see how things continue with Luda. So. All right, moving on to the next match is DIY. Don, um, Johnny Gargano and Tomsko 
Sinpa versus Imperialism, Luther Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Obviously, these two teams were feuding with against each other, and they had bad blood. Starting up, um, you know, when Johnny Gargano made his return, so the tag team match. Um, this was a great match. It went back and forth, um, body drops, light kicks, and stuff like that. You know, um, but at the end, DIY wins with a huge finisher. It's their DIY uh, finisher called the Meet in the Middle. They go in off the side, lift their hands up like this, and then they do a double kick to the side of the head on Gio Vinci Vinci. DIV defeats Imperialism with the meat in the middle, which is their finisher by pitfall. What a match. Um, Gunther's definitely not going to be happy. What do you think of this match? Well, yeah, I think this is a really interesting match. Um, of course, Gunther's not going to be happy with, with, this, with this loss um, because Johnny... Gargano and Ciampa are very good wrestlers as a tag team. It's good to see DIY back. Which, by the way, you know, I believe that the 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 tag teams that are there in the tag team division are not um, are not gone completely gone, and there are the legitimate um, potential tag teams that can challenge the Judgment Day for the World the Tag Team Championships. So, um, so the Judgment Day have to look out for these tag teams that are dangerous threat. Excuse me. We have to look out for these tag teams that are dangerous threats, and uh, they got to pay attention to them. All right. The next segment is um, Shinsuke Nakamura. Basically, is a him with another Japanese package thing that he's looking for his next sacrifice to step up to him. So Kensuke Nakamura with his Japanese package again. Um it's weird. <laughs> but um um but the next match is Candice LeRae versus Shi Lee. Um that Chinese girl that's been kept asking Becky Lynch for a title match. They did have a segment saying that Shi Lee said that oh um Becky Lynch is scared to face her, that's why she dropped the title. So I love to see a feud between Shi Lee and um Becky Lynch. But Candice LeRae going one on one with Shi Li, it was a pretty close match until um, um basically Shi Li um, his her kicks are so deadly, um I think she kicked Candice LeRae like twice, um jumping knee from Lee and then basically, um basically um, it just took it's a roundhouse kick so deadly Candice LeRae got hurt. Um, the referee had to stop the match. Um, first time I've ever seen a referee stoppage um, in a, a long time. So um, Candice LeRoe couldn't continue this match. He Lee with huge, huge two kicks to the face, um, leaving Candice LeRoe knocked out. Um, she Lee wins by referee stoppage. So that's unfortunate. She Lee is hungry for Becky Lynch. I can see her going to rage. She wants Becky Lynch so bad without the title even though, but... She was like on Hulk mode in this match. Two huge kicks to the face. Candice LeRoe um, gets knocked out and she Lee wins by referee stoppage. I'm telling you, she's hungry for Becky Lynch. Um, what do you think of this match? Yeah, so it's basically she won by a TKO, right? Yeah, so, so yeah, referee stoppage saying that Candice couldn't reach, uh, couldn't um, continue because she kicked Candice LeRoe in the face twice with two big kicks in the face. So. She, it was it wasn't for real though. It was a concussion, like well, maybe she gave a concussion, yeah, you know, I like know, I heard knocked her out. I know that she won by referee stopping. They had to call off the match. It got out of hand or whatever. <laughs> well, I, you know, we don't we don't know if, it, if it's like referee stoppage. It could mean like it was like a real referee stoppage. Like she yeah, was like, seriously she injured. Continue. Like if a ref if a if a wrestler can't continue, the referee would have to like stop the match. For example, Drew McIntyre shame is faced off against each other a couple years ago in a no disqualification match. The referee had to stop the match because both, game, both men collided with two um, steel um, steps and both men got knocked out. Referees checked on both. They both didn't reply. Referee stoppage. No, oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's good that the referee stopped stopped the match before it got more dangerous and deadly. And yeah. um, somebody, and, you know... Um, you know, and it's good that uh, well that that happened. Um, at the same time, um, 
you know, Shia Lee going after uh, Becky Lynch. Uh, Becky Lynch has to watch out for her because, you know, as you said, you know, her performing those roundhouse kicks are roundhouse kicks are not deadly, deadly. Um, and Shia Lee has to really watch her kicks, you know, make sure she doesn't, you know, try to kill, try to hurt, try to hurt um, Becky Lynch, you know, um, for real. I'm talking like it from a safety perspective. Um, but at the same time, um, Becky Lynch, you know, I don't think she really faced it. She at least really, she, she's more of a striker, the striker type. So I don't think Becky Lynch was really faced off against a striking type of wrestler. Um, so she has to really watch herself um, because she at least can do a lot of damage to her. She reminds, put me her out. Like a, she reminds me of a female Bruce Lee that kicks her deadly. <laughs> Plus, she is Chinese. Yeah. By the way, she is not my sister, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's not Jeff's sister. Um, but at, at the same time, um, you know, she Lee is, like, she, she she's kind of like, she, she's like Ronda Rousey and um, what's her face? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I'm forgetting her name. The one who's facing off against uh, Rhea Ripley. Um, you know, basically. Shayna Baszler. You know. Yeah, Shayna Baszler. So Shayna Baszler, Ronda Rousey, Shia Lee, um, they're all deadly, deadly strikers, and they know how to kick and punch. And, um, of course, you know, Becky Lynch, she can fight, but she's no striker, professional striker like like, like Shia Lee is. So it's, it's going to be interesting how, how she's going to have to uh, tackle that, but she's really got to watch herself. All right, uh, moving on to the next segment. This was a great package. Um, this was a great Drew McIntyre promo. Um, the full actual um, video is on Instagram, WWE. Um, it's basically Drew McIntyre talking about his career, the up and downs, how, you know, he's Vince McMahon said that he was the chosen one. You know, he came back to WWE, um, said that he was excited to win the to challenge Brock Lesnar, coming back to win the Royal Rumble, challenging Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. But then he tells, said that he wanted to win a title in front of the crowd until COVID ruined it, and said that um, he never actually had got to win a title in front of the fans until he had the chance to do it in his hometown against Roman Reigns. But he said that he met, got Roman Reigns beat until the bloodline ruined it once again and said that this Saturday is going to be different because he's going to beat Seth Rollins and win in front of the fans finally. So the whole package is amazing. And Seth freaking Rollins comes out and talks about his match against T.D. McDonough, saying that um he's going to beat the living shit out of Judgment Day's bad boy Jay McDonough. And then he um, sends Drew McIntyre a message saying that... Um, uh, um, calling Drew McIntyre a boo freaking hoe, and he said that he called Drew McIntyre a Scottish baby, and said that we were all suffering in 2000, fighting our battles, and said that um, Drew McIntyre needs to um get in line like Sami Zayn and Cody Rhodes, and uh, saying that he said that he actually he admits that Drew was a hell of a champion, and said that if he wins, he'll be the first man to shake his hand just like he did in 2020. Just a just a um memory for you guys. Drew McIntyre was WWE champion and he faced off against Seth Rollins in the Money in the Bank pay per view. That was the match they were talking about. Um, and he said that Seth Rollins was not the man he was back in 2020. He was not architect. He was not a messiah. They're different now, and he gets interrupted. Seth Rollins get attacked by um JD McDonough um JD McDonough um blindside Seth Rollins from behind like always people targeting his back and stuff like that um so what did you think of this uh little um segment by Seth Rollins and um I don't know if you saw the video package by Drew McIntyre I have not seen it um but I have to go back and watch it again um I do believe that this is a really good build up though for uh, both these men because it's Drew McIntyre is not trying to go out there and 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 win by um, by deceit. You know he's not trying to blindside blindside Seth Rollins, which is what JD McDonough is doing every chance he gets. So this is just a good. This is good for both of them. Um, 
I want to, I want to see who who will be the champion at Crown um, Jewel. Drew McIntyre or Seth Rollins. We're going to see who's going to be the winner. I'm saying it's Drew McIntyre that's going to be the winner. But I'm, we, we can talk about the predictions another day. But I don't know. I believe, you know, this this is a really good build up for both these men. And um, we're going to, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see what's going to happen on Saturday. All right. And that builds up to the one on one match between Seth Rican Rollins and J. Dick McDonough. This was a great match. Um, it went back and forth. Um, like always, the uh, Judgment Day always like to run interference. Damon Priest, um, there was a small chance that I thought Damon Priest was going to cash in. Damon Priest coming out with the Money in the Bank briefcase um, kind of gets distracted. Um, but Seth Rollins managed to hit the um, blackout kick. It was like, well, he, Seth Rollins wins by pitfall with blackout, but it was a stomp. Um, pedigree, um, Seth Rollins was able to hit the pedigree and then the stomp on J.D. McDonough with um, Damon Priest watching on. Seth Rollins defeats J.D. McDonough by pitfall with um, Damon Priest staring a hole with Seth Rollins. So what do you think of this match? Um, of course, of course, J.D. McDonough is going to lose and Seth Rollins is, always has to watch his back again. Um, so Damian Priest is really, really waiting for that opportunity to win the World Heavyweight Championship from Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins knows this. Um, so I, what, what can I say? When is Damian Priest gonna, going to cash in on Seth Rollins with time will tell? So we, will, we shall see. And just a heads up, they, uh, Adam Pierce made a number one contenders match for the Intercontinental Championship. It's going to be a fatal four-way match next week on Raw. It's going to be great. It's going to be Ricochet, Miz. So it's going to be Ricochet, Miz, Bronson Reed, and one half of the Viking Raiders, Ivar. So what if Ivar got a shot at the Intercontinental Championship? That'd be good. So a fatal four-way to decide who's their next challenger for next week on Raw. Um... Basically, and then it's announced. It was announced that J.D. McDonough will go one on one with Sami Zayn at Crown Jewel. So that's going to be a match that got added to the match card. Um, Sami Zayn one going one on one with J.D. McDonough. Um, I don't know why they did that, but oh well. <laughs> um, but um, um, basically that's just that. And the next match is Chelsea Green versus Natalia. Trick or street fight. So it's basically a Halloween edition street fight. So this. <laughs> this match was hilarious and creepy at the moment. Um, I just gotta say, Nikki Cross shows up um, with her head um, popped up on um, in the announce table and it freaks Chelsea Green out. Nikki Green's head, you can see her, she has a pumpkin on her head and she removed it. It's Nikki Cross like... <laughs> and it scares the crap out of Chelsea Green. There's Halloween for you. Um, I kind of knew that Nikki Cross wouldn't show up and basically... Um, it went back and forth. Um, basically, uh, there was a power bomb into candy corn. They just threw candy corn over the ring, and someone just got power bomb through candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was hilarious. Um, and then there was um, it was just it was just like candy corn all over the place too. And basically, um, Chelsea Green accidentally pies um, Pimper Nivens in the face. Um, it was chaos. It was crazy. <laughs> um, and then basically, um, um, Natalia got um, Natalia got um, Natalia got distracted, and um, Chelsea Green takes advantage and hits the kill switch, which is kind of like a Christian um, finisher. Um, Christian used to have the kill streak finisher. A lot. Um, Chelsea Green defeats Natalia by the kill switch, defeating Natalia in their um, trick or treat street fight. And this is exactly what I said. Chelsea Green is garbage. How many matches have she lost and how many won? This is her first televised win. That's how sad it is. So Chelsea Green defeats Natalia. That is her first televised win in a singles match. That's how sad it is. This is what I'm talking about how Chelsea Green is garbage. But um, yeah, she gets her first win. Let's go. Um, but what did you think of this match? <laughs> she got her first win. That's all that matters. Yeah, even though sad. she's probably yeah. lost how many times? How many times has she lost? Like four times I counted. I don't even know. 
Well, it's still better than not winning at all. I mean, otherwise, you know, if she lost, she would not have, she would not be giving, getting the praise that she won anyway. Um, I don't, I think, you know, again, with these, with these Chelsea Green and Natalia matches, it's, it's like, uh, it's interesting to see, to say the least. Um, with these, with these, with the matches with these two, I don't even, I don't even know what the cause, what's the root cause of this, of this, uh, of, of this, of these matches between them, you know, and um, yeah, Nikki Cross is just a troll. She's just trolling. She's trolling Natalia. She's trolling. Uh, I don't even understand why she's why she's getting involved with Chelsea Green and Natalia's matches, but yes, she is. I think she's just there to be the psychological factor um, against Natalia. So I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that about this uh, about this matchup between them. But I do believe that um, it's this it is what it is for the moment. That's all I. That's all I have to say. All right. Uh, moving on to the main event is Damian Priest going one on one with Sami Zayn. I was kind of wondering what the main event was. I actually thought that the Treak or Street Fight was going to be the main event, but they added Damian Priest versus Sami Zayn at the main event, like always. Um, when we go to the event in December fourth, they're probably going to have a main event with a Judgment Day or Sami Zayn again. Whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but this was a great match. Um, like always, they went back and forth until Jay Uso comes out and attacks Damon Priest, causing a disqualification. Damon Priest winning by disqualification. Um, and basically, a, a huge fight between Damon Priest, Jay Uso, um, Dominic Mysterio, JD McDonough comes, Cody Rose comes out for help. And basically, Cody Rose was trying to. Um, get payback for what Damon Priest did to him, like with the steel chair last week. Um, Cody Rhodes was set, wanted Sami Zayn to set up Damon Priest with the crossroads on the announce table. And basically, um, JD McDonough saves Damon Priest. Ma Damon Priest managed to run away. Um, Cody Rhodes managed to hit two crossroads on JD McDonough on the announce table and sends a message on, um, sends a message um, to Damon Priest saying that what was Damon's story? Um, saying that he got a brief kick and he's not the leader of the Judgment Day. He's just a walk behind. He said he walks behind Rhea Ripley's back. He walks behind Finn Balor's and even Dominic Mysterio. Saying that um, Cody Rhodes is back and his path goes through um, Damon Priest on Saturday. So Cody Rhodes calling out um, Damon Priest ending the show. Um, so that's crazy. Two crossroads on JD McDonough on the announce table. JD McDonough gets absolutely demolished. And um, Cody Rhodes sending a huge message to um, Damon Priest before the showdown, Crown Jewel, ending the show. So, what did you think of this main event? Well, I mean, it's really interesting. Of course, State Judgment Day is going to do its thing and in getting involved and in interfering matches. Um, but at the same time, again, that backfired on them. Um, so, this... Um, this turn of this turn of events with with Cody Rhodes talking to Damian Priest about um, the Judgment Day not really having a leader when they do have a leader is is waking it's helping Damian Priest to understand that and uh, wake up to the reality that hey um, you guys do have a leader but I'm not really sure myself when I heard. Uh, uh, Cody Rhodes saying that, but I think that uh, Damian Priest is trying to deny the truth. Um, but they do have a leader, and even though everybody's doing their own thing, they 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 still have some sort of functionality. Um, and so, Damian Priest, you know, he's I think he's being held back by. By Rhea Ripley, he's being held back by Dominic, and he's being held back by um, he's being held back by by Finn Balor because originally Finn Balor was so jealous of Damian Priest 
he didn't want Damian Priest to cash in, but now that they're champions, they're they're kind of holding him back, you know. And I think Damian Priest knows that in the back of his head, but he's really there um, to put the team the, the Judgment Day first ahead of his own needs. So that will do it for WWE Monday Raw this past Monday, October 30th, I believe. Um, but um, yeah, um, in terms of grading, I think this um, show was pretty good. Um, it was a great show, honestly. I think it had up and down, so I'm giving this show an A-. minus. How about you? I'm going to give it an, an A. A? Yes. All right, so that will do it. Thank you guys for watching. This is um, our Raw recap, and this is the final Raw before Crown Jewel. And um, be sure to stream Crown Jewel on Peacock this Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So it's going to start at 12 p.m. Eastern round in Saudi Arabia. Um, there's a lot of matches, and um, we will see you guys later. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Bruin Steele, and this is Canadian Yorker. Any last second things you want to add? Nope, nope, no last thoughts. All right, but anyways, I'm Bruce Steele. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys later. Um, so the thing I want to mention is that I will be doing a broadcast, my broadcast recap for Friday Night SmackDown Friday night because Crown Jewel starts on Saturday. So I'll be doing my um recap video for Friday Night SmackDown right after the show ends on Friday night. So. I'm not sure if Canadian Yorker here is going to join me. I'm most likely going to be doing it by myself, so I'm not quite sure. Um, it's up to Canadian Yorker. But then um, next week we'll have a Crown Jewel recap, and that's just that. So I'm Bruin Steele. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs>